Hello everyone and welcome to USB Forensics and Pen Testing. In this last video in this series we are going to cover the solution to the challenge that we posed in the previous video. So hopefully you are able to identify the number of devices number of hid devices in the previous video. You might have noticed some traffic from other devices on the same hub, on the same bus. So, you know, that's the way it goes, right? We talked about this before. We said sometimes you just have to filter out everything. And here are the three devices that you should have found. So one of them is this keyboard which is a legitimate keyboard it's an actual keyboard the second device you should have found was this guy now this guy is actually a PIC microcontroller board uh, PIC if you're not familiar with them they are made by microchip they're one of the largest chip manufacturers around uh, and PIC controllers are something just like the AVRs that you might be more familiar with in the Arduinos. Uh, sometimes people think they're a little bit more hardcore. And then here we have our third device was a Teensy 3.1. And let's look at these in a little bit more detail. So in terms of the device numbers that were assigned when you looked at this capture, the keyboard was device 23, the microchip PIC32 was device 24, and the Teensy was assigned an address of 25. So let's go ahead and walk through these solutions. So if I walk through my solutions here, what am I going to find? All right, so the first thing I want to do is look at the keyboard. So if I filter on address 23, I will see here it's asked to set its address, which it does, and the standard stuff. The device descriptor that's returned says, oh, going to tell you later in terms of the class, etc. Then we have our requests. We say, please give me the configuration and now really give it to me all of it second time and the second time we notice that there are two interfaces there's one configuration two interfaces that are available and as you might expect the first interface is a boot interface that's the protocol that it talks so the subclass says I'm a boot protocol interface and I'm a keyboard Also, it will tell you that I am having a second interface which has a subclass of zero and a protocol of zero, which means please do the full deal. I'm capable of doing the, the entire protocol. Right. Now, if we zip back here real quick and we look at this response, we can get the vid and the PID. Here again, this is verified by Wireshark. Wireshark has a database of these things, and it says, oh, that's a Sigma Micro Keyboard Tracer Gamma Ivory. So that looks legit to me, and other ways that you can see that this is legit. If you trace further into the traffic, you'll see it returns the appropriate descriptors it says, I'm a keyboard. 
here's who made me and when we look at the traffic going forward we see that sure enough it's accepting standard commands like set idle and it's asking for a hid report so here's the descriptor for our hid report and as we talked about before you see the global items local items and then you'll see a collection of main items you'll see there's quite a few things in here so this all looks good this is what a proper keyboard looks like if I look a little further down I will see here's some of the traffic that's going back and forth another descriptor request and there's some traffic coming in so here I have some report traffic you can also notice which endpoints it's coming in on and that will give you some indication as well that this is in fact a legit keyboard uh, other indicators as to whether or not it's legit sometimes if you try to put too much information in too fast that's another indicator that this is not a real keyboard great so all of this looks pretty standard so let's move on to device number two which was device 24 now if I look at this device we start here it set its address to 24 and it got a device descriptor and the descriptor says my vendor ID is microchip technology Inc and my product is unknown so that already is kind of a red flag you might say hmm microchip they make microcontrollers not keyboards so much um, again some devices that you can build will allow you to override this but a lot of them it's not terribly easy to do so then we have a couple of other packets here and we ask for the configuration first time second time and here on the second time we see there is one interface and what does that one interface look like sure enough the one and only interface has two endpoints and it is a boot interface and it's a keyboard so again this is a big red flag to you this says this is a bogus device it only supports the wimpy boot protocol it doesn't support the full deal as a normal keyboard would and you can look and see it's got an in endpoint and an out endpoint which isn't a bad thing but again the fact that it has an out endpoint and it only supports the boot protocol could be a little bit suspicious you know again someone could be using this to try to exfiltrate some data out of your computer naturally if you look at the traffic that you're going to get from this guy you know he supports US English not surprising of course the string hid keyboard demo that's that's a big clue there I should probably have changed that and I might have been able to change a few other things as well and here we see different traffics there is one out packet that I saw back here there it is and again this is probably sending out information about things like caps lock etc all right so that 
is the second device, the microchip device. So let's look at the last device. The last device had address 25 assigned to it. And here we get the descriptor. And you have a very interesting vendor ID, Van Ogen Technische Informatica. And the product ID is Teensy Duino Keyboard Mouse Joystick. So, you know, this is a little bit suspicious. <laughs> you know, you have this bizarre vendor ID that corresponds with the manufacturer of the Teensy. So I'm a little bit suspicious. Let's see what else might make me suspicious. So we get our configuration first time, second time. So here I have my configuration. This configuration has four interfaces. Now, the reason that it has so many interfaces, for one thing, this is a keyboard, mouse, and joystick. So if I scroll down a little bit further, I will see that here is a boot interface for the keyboard. And note which interface this is. It's interface 0. And it has one endpoint. That one endpoint is endpoint 3, which is an interrupt endpoint. And then I see my next descriptor is another hid device. Basically, it's my keyboard with the full protocol. So that's a good thing, unlike the pick example that we just went through. This actually has real live interfaces, you know, that support the full protocol. All right, so that is supporting that on endpoint 5. And then here we have two more interfaces. We have keyboard, which we just talked about, and then we have a mouse and a joystick. So those are somewhat uninteresting. All right, so if we go forward with this traffic, let's see. You know, we're getting descriptors that say things like, hey, I'm a teensy duino. And we're getting our hit, so that's good. We'll get our descriptor. It's a very odd string descriptor, but that's what it is. We go through and we say, hey, can you give me that hid descriptor that shows me what the reports look like? And it does. And then we say, get me a report, please. And notice that there's some traffic here. And you'll see some traffic on some of the mouse and joystick endpoints, but not too much here. All right, so we have some data flowing in on endpoint number three. And endpoint number three was, in fact, that first endpoint. So if you go back, so we'll go back to the top real quick here and just make a note of the configuration when it defined the first interface it said it has an endpoint and that endpoint was number three so in terms of what's actually being used here it's only using the very first interface 
Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that this is bogus, right? But there are other ways that you could tell that, yes, this one is bogus. It's a little bit harder than the pit controller. Now, one thing I should point out here, here we've used a Teensy 3.1, right? Which is considerably more powerful than the original Teensy or even the Teensy 2. Because it is much more powerful, it can emulate a proper keyboard. So how do you tell that this Teensy is bogus? You have to look at other little clues, such as the vid, pid combinations. You can look for mismatches. You know, if you can say this is a known vid, pid, or if they give you a bogus vid, pid. You know, if you look it up, so to speak, you can say, oh, you gave me this, but I, I know that that's not corresponding with the string descriptor that you also gave me. So those are ways that you can determine that this is, in fact, a bogus device. Other things, things like rates. You know, what is the rate that you're providing keys to me? You know, if you're providing keys to me at some insane rate and consistently doing that, I'm going to, again, be very suspicious that you're a bogus device. All right, so that is our solutions for our second challenge. I hope you've enjoyed this course. I know that I've enjoyed uh, developing this course and teaching this course for you guys. Uh, don't be afraid, however. Uh, this is not the end. There's new courses coming out every day on, on Security Tube's Pen Tester Academy. So, you know, hopefully I will see you again in another course soon. And as always, if you're enjoying these courses, please tell a friend and help us spread the word and help us offer even more of these courses for you. See you guys around.